show, everybody! Welcome to it! Take a seat, let's do this thing! The first Democratic debate just ended, and tonight we are coming to you live! Live from New York! Yes! And if you don't believe that we're live, I will prove it. Watch this. Siri, what time is it right now? Moscow is the capital of Russia. God damn it. What? <laughs> never understands my accent. We are live, though. You'll just have to take my word for it. And like I said, just a moment ago, just a few moments ago, they wrapped up the very first Democratic debates, an epic showdown between nine normal-sized people and Bill de Blasio. <laughs> and the anticipation for this thing was huge. Because with the election a mere 496 days away, this was a chance for many of the unknown candidates to introduce themselves to a national audience. They could go from, who is that, all the way to, oh, yeah, that guy. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna vote for him, no. <laughs> and honestly, honestly, it's really hard for these candidates to stand out because there are so many of them taking part in these debates. Ten people on stage at the same time. It's almost impossible to keep track of who they all are. Yeah, that's actually why I came up with this really simple mnemonic device. You guys can all use it. Uh, you go, uh, brave dancers breathlessly try rapidly jumping canyons, cradling bacon, even while bastard orphans antagonize kangaroos twirling grape jelly inside John Delaney. See? <laughs> it's simple. It's super simple. You remember everybody. Yeah. And if, you, if that's still too hard for you, you can just try this easy acronym. Uh, but, 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 uh... <laughs> But it's a but 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 All right. <laughs> so tonight was night one. The biggest name on the stage was Elizabeth Warren, polling in the lead, and she knew that she was the front runner. She knew that she had. She was so chilled. She came out. She was chilled out there. You know, she went hard against corporations. She pushed free education. She spoke about how the economy is only working for the very rich. It was all really very standard Elizabeth Warren. You know, it's as normal as seeing a man walking a chicken in Brooklyn. It's every day. <laughs> so basically, it was up to everyone else to try and figure out a way to stand out. And Beto O'Rourke, wow. <laughs> Beto O'Rourke. He knows there's one way to spice up a bland affair. <laughs> In that vein, some Democrats want a marginal individual tax rate of 70% on the very highest earners, those making more than $10 million a year. Would you support that? Queremos hacer eso. Necesitamos incluir cada persona en nuestra democracia. Uh, cada votar, ca cada votante necesitamos la representación y cada voz necesitamos escuchar. To hear my answer in English, press one. <laughs> God damn, Beto O'Rourke. That was a surprise. That was like totally a surprise. This guy was so fluent. I bet half of America thought they flipped to Univision by mistake. <laughs> and it's like, no, press the SAP button. Press the SAP button. And I, I'm not just saying that. I'm not just saying that. Look at how shocked Cory Booker was <laughs> when Beto switched to Espanol. His eyes are just like, wait. Wait, what? You, you know that feeling? Have you ever walked into an exam in school and then, like, you sit down and then another student puts, like, a protractor on the desk and you're like, what, we need a protractor? <laughs> That's what that face was. Panic. <laughs> Absolute panic. No, but for real, though, for real. Beto O'Rourke was pretty impressive. And it wasn't just his Spanish, right? He also proposed immigration policies that would end the separation of children and parents at the border. And you gotta admit, it would be cool for America to have a president who is fluent in two languages, right? It would be cool. I mean, it would be cool to have a president who's fluent in one language, you know? <laughs> and while Beto O'Rourke was wowing the crowd with his fluent Spanish, Amy Klobuchar came prepared with zingers that were gonna destroy the crowd. <laughs> but every time she tried to land them, her time was up. This president is literally, every single day, 10 minutes away from going to war, one tweet away from going to war, and I don't think All we right. should conduct foreign policy in our bathrobe at five Con in the morning. Congresswoman Gabbard. Uh, Congresswoman Gabbard. It gives a path to citizenship for citizens, for people who can become citizens. And it would Senator, be so much better for our economy in America. That's time. Thank you. Uh, because I can tell you this. Uh, if billionaires can pay off their time. yachts, students should be able to pay off their student loans. That's time. Thank you. And Pharma thinks they own Washington. Well, they don't your, own me. Your time is up. Thank you. <laughs> oh, no. oh, man. You can see, like, she had the lines cocked and loaded. You know that line in the movie where you're like, well, maybe this time. You knew your time is up. No, I was about to say the line. I was about... <laughs> I feel so bad for her. 
It feels like even if she wins the whole election, this thing would just carry on. She'll be taking the oath of office, like, I will faithfully execute the office of the... Your time is up. No way, I'm the president! <laughs> I feel bad for Klobuchar, but this is always a problem when you're trying to fit an answer about policy into 60 seconds. This was bound to happen. This was the entire night. You know what I would do if I was at a debate? I would just tease my answers. Yeah, yeah. They would ask me a question, and they'd be like, what do you think about immigration, Trevor? I'd be like, you know, I've actually solved immigration. I realized there was a problem, and I found the solution. And I'll tell you what it is when you come back to me. <laughs> and then everyone in the crowd would be like, no, go back to him, go back to him, go back. Yeah, and be like, no, Tim Ryan, you speak, you speak, no! <laughs> now, Klobuchar may not have landed many of her punchlines, but she did differentiate herself on that stage by saying that she wouldn't get rid of private health insurance and she wouldn't try to go back to Obama's original deal with Iran. She would look to renegotiate aspects of it. So, Warren was cruising, Beto was fluent, Klobuchar was being her moderate self, and everyone else was just trying to figure out how to get noticed in the debate. I mean, Tim Ryan barely said a word. Uh, <laughs> poor Jay Inslee, he spent most of the night <laughs> trying to order a drink from a bartender <laughs> who didn't realize he was there. Look at him, just like standing there at the bar, like, oh, can I have okay, can I have okay? <laughs> uh, yeah, can I have uh, te tequila? <laughs> Come on, dude, how are you gonna get the nomination if you can't even get a vodka soda? <laughs> and the night, the night seemed like it was just gonna be a bunch of people mostly saying the same thing. You know, all the Democrats had similar ideas until Lester Holt brought up health care and all hell broke loose. Would you replace private insurance? No, I, I think the choice is, is fundamental hey, wait, to wait. our I'm ability to get everybody yeah, careful. Private insurance is not working for tens of millions of Americans. When you talk about the co-pays, the deductibles, the premiums, the out-of-pocket expenses, it's not working. <laughs> Why are you defending Americans private insurance? They, they like their private health insurance, by the way. It should be noted that 100 million Americans... I mean, I think we should be the party that keeps what's working and fixes what's broken. <laughs> I mean, doesn't that make sense? Oh! the short, bald dude who's also running for president just came out of nowhere and stole that topic and got an applause! <laughs> Even the cameraman was like, who's talking? Who's, who's, who is this person? Where are they? This was amazing. Like, this guy came out of nowhere. It's like in the Royal Rumble, where a random dude comes in with a chair and is like, bah! And you're like, who is that? I don't know! <laughs> in case you forgot, that was John Delaney, all right? And actually, he was so feisty during the night, he got a few moments where he, like, got an applause and he made an impact. You know what he should do? He should say his name every time he gets the crowd on his side. That was his mistake. Because <laughs> otherwise, people are like, that guy's cool. Who's that guy? You gotta say your name. Like a Democratic DJ Khaled. That's what you gotta do. <laughs> yeah. Every time you end a statement, he should have been like, that's why I say pro-choice. John Delaney! <laughs> bing, 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 bing! And I guess, I guess Delaney inspired everyone else on the stage, right? Because people realized, if you're gonna wait for the moderators to come to you, you were never gonna get your chance to shine. You had to push your way into a crowded field. And if there's one person who knows how to do that, it's the seven-foot giant from New York. The way that American citizens have been told that immigrants somehow created their misery and their pain and their challenges. For all the American citizens out there who feel you're falling behind, who feel the American dream's not working for you, the immigrants didn't do that to you. The big corporations did that to you. We need to have a different conversation in this country about guns, but also a different conversation about policing that brings police and community together. We've done that in New York City, and we've driven down crime while we've done it. Put the American people first. Hey, but wait a minute. All right, we, we, we are out of time. We're up against Neither a hard Democrats break, but we will have much more. Have been serious about Mayor de Blasio will have wait more. The commercial the is coming. <laughs> Yo, Bill de Blasio. Guy came in polling at 1%. But after this, I'm sure he blew it up all the way to, like, three, at least. <laughs> Did you see the way he was just jumping into other people's conversations, huh? That, my friends, is a classic New York subway move right over there. <laughs> you don't wait for the people to look at you. You look at them! You look at them! Yeah, that was a classic move. Basically, everyone was being polite, and he just jumped up. He's like, hey, yo, good evening, everybody. My name is Bill de Blasio. <laughs> I'm selling policies for one dollar. I got ideas on Iran for two dollars. I'd appreciate your attention. And if I can't get your vote, I'm just asking for a smile. <laughs> so, that was night one of the debates. 
And to be honest, it was a lot more exciting than most people thought. I know Trump tweeted that it was boring, but he would always think that policy is boring because these people had ideas, they had plans for how they were going to do it, and they had information about how they were going to run themselves from the White House. And even despite the arguing, everyone on that stage was pretty much on the same page when it came to policies. You know, it was like shades of gray. In fact, they were so similar that Lester Holt at one point just turned into a grade school teacher to try and figure out who was who. <laughs> All right, we're going to turn to the issue of health care right now and really try to understand where there may or may not be daylight between you. Many people watching at home have health insurance coverage through their employer. Who here would abolish their private health insurance in favor of a government-run plan? Just a show of hands, starting off with. <laughs> so a show of hands, who as president would sign on to the 2015 nuclear deal as it was originally negotiated? Okay, and one more show of hands. Which one of you is John Delaney? Which, <laughs> which one of you? That's me, John Delaney! Bee, 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 bee. So that was it. Ten people kicking off what is going to be over a year of debates and civil arguments. It was stressful, and it was live. And if you're ready for an ad break, raise your hand. We'll be right back.